Hey guys, what is up? So today I have the first 2022 Forester Wilderness finally on the lot. This was a customer order and we finally have it. So I wanted to show you guys around this, share with you some details on it and show you some of the differences between this and the Outback Wilderness that has been out for quite a few months before this one. If you guys are new to my channel, my name is Alex. I like to share weekly videos on Subaru. So if you enjoy those types of videos, please be sure to click the subscribe button down below. And if you guys learn something new out of this video or get enjoyment out of it, please be sure to click the like button. Starting out with the exterior of the car, just looking at it, you can tell it looks identical to the Outback Wilderness in a lot of ways. So they did carry over the same design characteristics, but put it on the Forester platform. You can also get this in the geyser blue that is unique to the wilderness trim, but I don't have one here on the lot just yet. So I actually have a customer who ordered one around the same time this one was ordered and his geyser blue Forester should be here in the next couple days. He's actually a YouTube subscriber as well. So if he sees this video, he will know his car should be here any day now. This car has not been detailed yet. So we got it off the truck. It went through inspection and we pulled all the stickers off. So. Don't hate on me for the watermarks that you see. This will get all cleaned up, looking nice for the customer, but I did wanna show you guys some stuff close up. So obviously with the Wilderness Edition, you get this large arched uh, cladding and it has that textured material that you see on the Subaru cladding. But what I wanted to show you guys is instead of having the gloss black deck lid or trim pieces, it has that same texturized cladding there on the back so it's more rugged if rocks and things are coming up or sticks are coming up and hitting that material you don't have to worry about the polished piano black trim pieces getting dirty because they're no longer polished black it's this matte finish black with the textured material that same textured material is carried over to the mirror caps which are going to obviously see a lot of potential impact with rocks and sticks being that it is on the front of the car. And then up here on the grill, we saw in my last video with the Forster Touring, this was a piano black, but obviously with the Wilderness, you're gonna be taking it off road or more likely to be. And so they carried over again, that same cladding up here on the front as well. The Wilderness gets the front matte black decal on it. Doesn't matter what exterior color you get, it will have that matte black decal and actually today I brought this car in because it's raining outside and it's cold, but this is a great example to show you. You can see with the gloss black hood that there's a lot of glare with the lights. So obviously if you're out on the trails or driving out in the sun, as you're going up a steep hill, you're gonna be able to see the front of the hood much easier. And this is going to decrease the amount of glare because of this matte finish there in the center of the hood. So there are some people who see this and they hate on it because it resembles, it kind of looks like a racing stripe or a portion of that, but it is there for a functional purpose to decrease the glare. It's not there just for looks. So whether you hate it or love it, it is there for a reason. The Forester Wilderness Edition also gets a little bit of a suspension upgrade with a slight lift, just like the Outback Wilderness. So you get 9.2 inches of ground clearance with the Forester Wilderness and the standard Forester, it is 8.7 inches. So, you know, about a half an inch of increase. And you do get these 17 inch alloy wheels as a standard, the matte black five spoke wheels wrapped in the Yokohama Geolander all-terrain tires. You will also be happy to know that with the Wilderness Edition, you do get a full size matching spare. So it has the same matte black matching five spoke wheel, just like you have with the Outback Wilderness Edition. You get that in the Forester Wilderness as well. While we're back here, I'll go ahead and show you guys the retractable cargo cover. So this is just like it is in the other Subaru options, but you might be wondering, cause I've shown this in previous videos, what if you don't wanna use this? Can you store it out of the way just like you can in other vehicles, even though it has the full size spare? And I'm gonna show you right now. So it takes just a little bit of maneuvering, but with moving these panels over here, you can fit the cargo cover nicely under the floorboard where it sits nice and flush out of the way when you don't need it. Something that used to only be an exclusive on the Touring trim is now a standard on the Touring, the Limited and the Wilderness. I actually didn't know that the Wilderness had this until we got this one. So these are the one touch 
quick release levers for the second row. Looks like that one's a little bit stuck. And there you go. So you can drop your seats whenever you're loading up cargo from the rear. Something else I wasn't aware of until just now is that, so although this one has the rear seatback protectors on it, the backing of the Wilderness Edition is actually the same StarTex material that you have on the front. It's just a different texture. It's a little bit harder and more rugged. So, you know, you might be able to get away with not having a rear seat back protector on this. At least you would definitely be able to get away with it much easier than you would on your standard Forester because standard Foresters have cloth material back here. But it is nice to have this thicker, more rugged material, especially because whenever it does get dirty, you can pull it out just like this, hose it off, let it dry out and put it back in whenever you need it. The Forester Wilderness also comes standard with the keyless access with push button start and the power tailgate. So I've talked about the benefits of this push button start and the ability to set up your remote start through the My Subaru app. It is a subscription. I am going to be making a video on that very soon because I've had a lot of people request it. So stay tuned for that. But this is how your power tailgate works with the Subarus whenever it's equipped. So you click and hold this button right here and it will lower the tailgate. You can also click and hold it to open the tailgate as well. In my last video, I covered these briefly. You've got two cargo hooks now that are standard on all Foresters in 2022. So you can put a bag there, which somebody brought up a good point. If you put a bag there and you're driving, if it's heavy enough, it could bust out this back window. So, you know, there's, there's a, I would say a limit. This has a six pound limit, so you wouldn't want to have anything too heavy there. And additionally, it might be more useful at a stationary position if you're camping, you could hang a light here or some other form of equipment to have it out of the way. Speaking of lights, the Wilderness Edition does get a rear cargo LED light back here in the cargo area, as well as back here on the hatch. Moving on to the front of the car, the Forester Wilderness gets the full LED steering responsive headlights with this C-shaped design that we've seen in previous generations. And now with the Forester Wilderness Edition, just like the Outback Wilderness, you get this round circular fog light with six LED individual bulbs. The Forester Wilderness is the only Forester that has the front view monitor camera. So this is great for not only on the trails, whenever you're going up and around corners and hills, but also even if you never take it off roading and you just wanna get a little bit better view when you're pulling in or out of parking spaces, pulling up to cars and parking lots, this is gonna be much easier to be able to see visibly in front of you. I'm not sure why Subaru did this, but when comparing the Outback Wilderness to the Forester Wilderness, you'll notice that on the front, the tow hook, so there's only actually one tow hook on the front and one in the rear. And instead of having that anodized copper finish around the tow hook panel to hide it, you just have this black cladding panel here. So it is much more discreet and you wouldn't see it as likely as you would with the Outback Wilderness. If you look down below here past this silver uh, aluminum painted plastic piece, there is an actual aluminum skid plate down below here. Now that aluminum skid plate is gonna be very soft. So for heavy off-road use, probably isn't gonna do much good, but Subaru does sell genuine skid plate accessories. So you can get something more substantial if you want on your Subaru. In my last video where I covered the new things for the 2022 Forester, that one was a touring edition and it has four tie down points for the roof rails. For the Wilderness Edition, you can see it has six tie down points, three on this side and three on the other side. These roof rails can also support up to 800 pounds static weight. So this is great for if you wanna go camping and you wanna put a tent on top of your Subaru. I'm gonna show you guys the interior of the car real quick, and then we're going to move on to the engine and talk about some of the performance. This is different from the Outback Wilderness, but it's also different from your standard Forester. So I'll talk about that in just a moment. On the Wilderness Forester, you get the same interior seats that you get in the Outback Wilderness with the embossed badges up at the top and the headrest, the orange or gold stitching, and the dimpled StarTex material. Now this material is water repellent and it's vegan. So it gives you the same feel and quality, in my opinion, as leather, but gives you a more sustainable product and something that is very easy to maintain and clean. 
The floor mats in the Wilderness Edition also carry over the same design that you see in the Outback. You've got the Wilderness badge logo and the rocks or mountainous material makes it look a little bit more rugged than your standard all-weather floor liners. The floor pedals are the aluminum brush finish with little rubber grips on them, so great for grip and things like that. When you are in the car, maybe you have mud or dirt or water on your feet, you'll have the confidence of having more grip with this style pedal. On the door cards, you have the same design carried over with the StarTex material, the orange stitching, and you get these little Subaru Wilderness tags. I think those are really cool. Just adds a nice touch to the car overall feel of the, the interior design. The speakers on the Forester Wilderness Edition are actually Harman Kardon, which is interesting to note because the Outback Wilderness doesn't even offer Harman Kardon. That's something that a lot of people complained about and wanted, so it's nice to see that they added this on the Forester Wilderness Edition for people who want a little bit better sound quality than what comes standard in your Subaru. The interior really resembles a lot like the Outback, minus the screen. So this is obviously a, a smaller touchscreen display than you see in the Outback that has that 11.6 inch touchscreen display. You still have your analog controls and you have the orange anodized copper finishes on the steering wheel, the shift lever, and on your X mode button. So we covered the interior of the car, the exterior of the car. Now let's talk about the engine and some of the performance. If you read anything in the media about the Forester Wilderness Edition, you know that it has double the towing capacity as your standard Forester. So standard Foresters have a 2.5 liter four cylinder engine with 182 horsepower and can tow up to 1500 pounds. This one has the same 2.5 liter engine, 182 horsepower, but it can tow up to 3000 pounds. So if you're like me, at this point, you're probably questioning, how is that possible? How do they do that? Well, Subaru has done that in a couple different ways. So starting out, they added a more powerful engine cooling fan on the Wilderness Edition. And then the second thing they did was adding an external oil cooler for the CVT transmission. So this is how they've been able to achieve a greater towing capacity. They have also changed the gear ratio for the transmission to allow for better lower end torque, low speed torque, when climbing hills and pulling things behind the vehicle. The last performance feature that I wanna talk about is X mode. So if you're unfamiliar with X mode, I'll give you a brief explanation on that right now. And basically what that does is it changes your all wheel drive system characteristics. So Subarus are all wheel drive at all times, but if you're in a situation where you may lose traction, you may want to have more control over how that is operating. So for example, with traditional X mode or single X mode, what would happen is if you've got X mode activated, whenever you're climbing a steep hill, it will detect loss of traction and send power to the wheels that only have traction. So an example of this is you're climbing a muddy road or a gravel road that has just been rained on and the front wheel starts slipping. Well, it's gonna stop power to that wheel and it's gonna send it to the other two or three wheels, whichever ones have traction to keep the vehicle moving forward. So what Subaru has done is they've integrated a system now where you can adjust to dual X mode. So snow dirt is gonna be more like the single X mode that I was just talking about, where it's gonna limit wheel spin. And then deep snow mud is going to turn your traction control off. So it's gonna allow more wheel spin whenever you're in a situation where you've got heavy snow or you need a little bit of wheel spin to gain momentum. So traditionally, X mode would deactivate whenever you reach a speed of, I believe, like 18 miles an hour or 20 miles an hour. They've now increased that to 25 miles an hour. And whenever it would deactivate, you would have to go over here and turn it back on. Well, now they've made it more of a passive function. So once it's on, as you're driving through the mountains, through the hills, wherever, and you turn X mode on, it will turn on and off for you automatically whenever you get below the 25 mile an hour speed limit. So for example, if you've got X mode on right now, you exceed 25 miles an hour, it's going to shut that X mode off. But once you fall below 25 miles an hour, it's going to turn that X mode back on for you. So you don't have to fool with the buttons. Once it's on and set, it's passive. It'll be on when you need it and it'll be off when you don't. That about wraps it up for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please be sure to click the like button. If you like Subaru videos like this, please be sure to click the subscribe button down below. I hope you guys have a great day and I will see you in the next one.